my name is Marty and this is my makeover channel. Today I'm doing something different. First up, let me show you what I've done with my hobby room. I've cleared the bench space here by putting on a tool board at the rear there. And all those things now are off the bench and I've got more space to work. I've also picked up this $2 doll from the charity shop and he's going to be my mascot from now on. And his name is Marty. Well, I think he looks a little bit like me anyway. As I said, I'm going to be doing something different. I thought I would show an unusual model that was sent to me, and I hope that it will be of interest to you. It's the Matchbox Battle King K111 Missile Launcher, and I'm going to point out some of the features. It's an unusual model. One unusual feature is the rollomatic style radar above the cabin there that spins as you push it forwards and backwards. It's got a split front windscreen, it's got a couple of side doors on the cabin, it's a two seat cabin. There's also a observation hatch on the roof and you don't want to use that if the vehicle's in motion because the radar will smash you in the head. Moving on, there's some reinforcing on the sides here, I think they're representing bumper bars or something. There's a pickaxe and a spade. On the rear we have two doors that open from the middle. Look like they've got some fancy locks on them there. Some more bumpers on the back. There's an axe and a plumber's pipe spanner or monkey wrench. On the front we've got these agricultural tow points or I don't quite know what they are. Um, there's a hatch there for escaping maybe, escape hatch. On the rear there's a cover for the differential and concealed underneath there's a couple of jerry cans I'm guessing full of fuel. On the right hand side there's a toolbox and on the left hand side I'm guessing it's a fuel tank. Now these came out in several different colours metallic green, dark olive green, light green and metallic blue. Now, I'm just going to show you how this radar rotates there's a red plastic disc under there and that's actually connected probably by a red plastic shaft to the red plastic radar and it bears on the axle there at that point on the front left hand wheel and gravity holds it down and as the wheel spins the radar is turned very simple design that works quite well and has stood the test of time now this also has a very special secret you push on this red button at the back, bang, a missile storage and deployment system is revealed, minus the missiles, which is not unusual with this model. They are often found with no missiles. But watch this. Ta -da! We have some white plastic missiles here, and I'm going to show you how they shoot. Pull back on that little tab and pow, they fly off and disappear forever. The addition of the missile function reminds me of the Shadow 2 that was made by Dinky from the Jerry Anderson UFO series in the 1970s. Anyhow, the Matchbox missile launcher came out with black missiles. Now I didn't realize this until I did a little bit of research. Uh, I mistakenly printed out some white ones. So now I'm gonna print out some black ones. To do this, I got the plan off of Thingiverse, which is a free library of 3D designs. I have found this product from Robin ST, who's kindly uploaded it free for everyone else to use. So I downloaded it and imported it into my SketchUp software. And here I've opted to add supports and rafts for the printing automatically. It's gonna take 50 minutes to print six of them. So before I can do that, I've got to change the color of the filament from yellow to black. So I press on the unload button and the printer starts heating up. Now I support my spools on the wall here because most of my failures occurred with the uh, filament jamming because it normally comes, it's fed from the cartridge at the rear of the machine, you can see there. 
Now whilst I'm waiting for this to heat up, I cut the filament off and wind up the old filament and put it back in the cupboard. Now it's hot enough though, I can remove the filament simply by pulling it up with my fingers like that. Now I've got this black filament and I'm now loading it. That's just a simple case of making sure the end is cut straight and then feeding it in through the, the feed tube and you can see it's coming out underneath when it starts flowing freely in the correct colour from the extrusion nozzle then you press stop and the machine is loaded. So here's the machine now and this footage is sped up something like 1500% and it's going crazy. Normally when it's printing you just set it up and go and wash the car or something similar, cut the grass and when you come back miraculously these parts appear on the printing platform. So I removed the printing platform and what a mess these look with all those supports in place. So now all I've got to do is remove the supports. First up, very carefully with the razor blade, you just get it underneath the printed model and gently prise it off the platform. There we go. Now here's a close up of this, what looks like a failed print. But as you can see, it is all crumbly. The supports are printed like a mesh and it can be easily removed. A lot of it with finger pressure. I think the white ones look better actually. The white filament seems to print smoother. So maybe I'll have to do some more in white and paint them black. But I thought I'd have a go at printing in black. So after you've pulled off all of the easily removable supports, you know, I then take this X-Acto knife just to clean them up that little bit more. Now, the nozzle here is very important. It has to be hollow. Otherwise, it won't fit onto the missile launch mechanism and there's a support in there so you have to cut that support out here I'm using a drill just to make sure the hole is clear now here's a close-up you can see the finish on these models they're printed in 0.2 of a millimeter thick layers and that ribbed effect is a result of that printing method I ended up giving them a coat of gloss black because where I'd sanded them they kind of went dull gray and it didn't look too good. But now I've picked the best three and I'm clipping them into position and I'm gonna give them a test. So they seem to fit in there, but will the doors close? You can see when you press on that red button, those levers at the rear retract and that enables you to push down the center section that locks into place. And then the two tabs also lock on the holes on the corners of the doors. And it all works quite well considering it's very complicated. There's a lot of moving parts in there. It must have been a major headache for the Matchbox modelers when their design crew came in and said, this is what we want. I wonder how many prototypes they made. Anyway, because I printed off six of these and I've got the original white ones as well, I thought I'd baggy them up and keep them for spares because no doubt the ones I've done are going to go missing in time. Now here's just some close-up scenic shots of this vehicle traversing some rough terrain. And here they're on a practice mission where they're deploying the missiles ready to fire. But as usual in these jobs, you never actually get to fire the real thing unless you go to war. So now they head off back to camp for a cup of tea and a slice of cake. Well, it's been a busy day and me and Kevin are off to bed now. So good night, Kevin, sweet dreams, and I'll see you tomorrow.
with that. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm happy.